Well, the overall aim of the research in my group is to use ecological expertise and tricks to try and control pests more effectively in a range of different settings so as to minimise the need for pesticide use and all of the well-known hazards associated with pesticides. So in this particular project we used a combination of research methods for a very obvious reasons. We're in the field a great deal in forests like this but that was complemented by laboratory work both with live insects and also culture plates in which we cultured the fungi that are associated with some of the insects that live in the forests and play a really important role in mediating the interactions between different types of insects. The major beneficiaries of this research was the softwood industry of Australia, so foresters growing pine trees like we see here. They're threatened by a large and quite spectacular insect called the Cyrex wood wasp. If it's not checked, we can get really serious levels of damage with many tens of hectares of forest being wiped out in a year. So we have to get on top of that pest and the best way of doing that is by using biological control. So the research has identified uh, processes within the operational program that we've been able to fine tune uh, and this has gone right across the country and has also been investigated uh, overseas where Cyrex wood wasp has also uh, established. An important characteristic of the research we've been talking about in pine trees is to really understand the ecology of the system. If you like to lift the hood and look under the, under the hood at what's making the system work. We've done that very successfully with the particular pests that are operating here but we can also do uh, similar approaches in quite different crop systems. Now the knack of enhancing biological control in crop systems is essentially a very simple technique that even our grandfathers would have recognised and it's companion planting. So rather than having a bare earth bank around a rice field, we can have those banks covered in a secondary crop. Those secondary crops can perform a really important function. They provide nectar, which is flight fuel if you like, for beneficial insects. After a feed of nectar, these tiny wasps can then forage in the adjacent rice field and parasitise the really important pests that potentially could build up to high numbers. Using this approach, we've had a number of benefits. So the flowers growing around the rice fields attract lots of beneficial insects and give them shelter. When the insects feed, they live longer, they produce more eggs and they attack more pests. As a consequence of that, of course, the pest densities are lowered quite dramatically in these rice fields. And the farmers love it. They recognise the benefits because on their own initiative, they're reducing spray intensity to less than one third of conventional practice. So it saves them money. They're spraying less. They're also getting higher yield. So it's a real double benefit for them. For those reasons, this method has taken off in East Asia. It's now used by tens of thousands of growers and it's actually become recommended practice by the Extension Bureau in China as national policy. We've worked with an organisation in Sydney called Organic Crop Protectants and we've developed a brand new product that can attract beneficial insects to a crop exactly when and where you need it. Effectively it's the plant recruiting bodyguards. I guess there's two, two processes. You've, you're basically having the the hippo component in, in the oil attracting, but it also um, induces the plant to produce its own volatile. So the oil of wintergreen or methyl salicylate actually stimulates the plant to produce its own volatiles, which then goes on to produce more volatiles. So then you get this plume of volatiles being produced by the plant that's highly attractive over a long distance to beneficial insects. Remarkably, our work has shown that the beneficial insects and spiders that can end up in a cotton field might come from as far away as three kilometres, an amazing distance. And so we've now altered, in collaboration with industry organisations, the recommendations to cotton farmers. Preserve some of the areas that previously you thought were wasteland, that just contained a few scrubby gum trees or understory. It's there that the beneficial insects will have refuge in the off-season, and if they're left intact, they can be a great reservoir of beneficials that will migrate into your crop to control your pests at the start of season.